Earnings continue to roll out. Some big names are putting out results this week. We're going to take a look at that and more coming up. And let's get you started this week with Movers and Shakers. The trend of low metals prices and high costs has continued to hurt first quarter earnings results for mining companies. Newmont Mining Corp., the U.S.'s largest gold-based miner, posted a drop in profit after releasing their figures Monday. Net income attributable to Newmont's common shareholders fell to $315 million, or 63 cents a share, from $490 million, or 97 cents a share in the comparative quarter last year. Earnings fell to $354 million, or 71 cents a share, from $578 million, or $1.15 per share. Gold and copper production was down in the quarter, while all-in cash costs per gold ounce rose to $1,086. Sales came in at $2.18 billion, compared to $2.68 billion in the last year's quarter. Reductions in cash costs were brought up by the company as they will look to trim $100 million in planned capital spending. Stillwater Mining released their first quarter results Tuesday, seeing good financial and production results. The company produced 127,000 ounces of PGMs, up from 121,000 ounces during the comparable quarter from last year. Consolidated net income attributable to common stockholders of $14.6 million on the quarter, or $0.12 cents per diluted share, compared to $6.2 million in the previous year. Total revenues for the first quarter were $250.6 million compared to $203 million in the first quarter of 2012. The company lowered debt to $300.2 million, down from $461.1 million. Also, Stillwater shareholders elected former U.S. Governor Brian Schweitzer to the Board of Directors Thursday. There have been allegations by Schweitzer and the Clinton Group that there has been mismanagement by current CEO Frank McAllister and the Board. Keep an eye on this one, the drama is far from over. The amount of gold released their earnings uh, Wednesday and saw their profit hurt by lower metals prices and higher costs. Net income was $102.1 million or 14 cents a share in the quarter compared with $170 million or 23 cents a share in 2012's first quarter. Earnings fell to $117 million or 16 cents a share from $184.3 million or 25 cents a share in the comparative quarter of 2012. Revenue fell 4% to $534.9 million, but production and sales were both on the rise. On the quarterly conference call, the company stated that they were looking to trim $100 per ounce off cash costs by mid-year and are targeting cutting $150 per ounce by year-end. We'll end with Gold Corp, who filed their earnings Thursday, posting a drop in profit because of lower, lower metal prices and higher cash costs. Net income dropped to $309 million, or $0.33 cents per share from $479 million, or $0.51 cents per share, during 2012's comparative quarter. Adjusted net earnings totaled $253 million, or $0.31 cents per share, compared to $404 million, or $0.50 cents per share, in the first quarter of 2012. Revenue was lower, coming in at $1 billion, down from $1.2 billion in the comparative quarter of last year, but production did rise to 614,600 ounces, a rise from 524,700 ounces of gold produced during the first quarter of 2012. Production was up in the quarter, and the company maintained its 2.55 million to 2.8 million ounce guidance for the year. Gold Corp has three big low-cost projects coming online in 2014 and 2015, which the company says will help reduce costs beginning in 2014. And that'll do it for this week's Mining Minutes wrap-up. Kitco News will be attending the Metals and Minerals Investment Conference in New York on May 13th and 14th. Check out the link below to keep up. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to send them to newsfeedback at kitco.com. And you can follow the conversation on Twitter at Alex underscore Letourneau. Have a good weekend.